Um, what I want to talk about tonight is um, one of our more popular products. Uh, it's the um, MFJ uh, 269. Um, <clears throat> now, most of the, um, let's see, I'm looking at the wrong one. Okay. Most, I'm going to talk about the 269, but almost all of the information that, um, uh, going, that I'm going to talk about is applies to the uh, MFJ 259. Uh, 269 adds the 415 to 470 megahertz range, and it also has a 12-bit A to D converter that makes it more accurate. <coughs> Let's see. <coughs> well, what is, what is the uh, MFJ 269? It's a, uh, it's a complete uh, battery power RF impedance analyzer, and it's primarily designed for 50 ohm transmission lines. But you can select other characteristics and impedances too. There's a, an advanced screen that you can pretty much select whatever characteristic impedance you want to use it for. Now you can also use it as a, uh, as a frequency counter that covers one to about 220 megahertz. And it's also a constant amplitude signal generator, so you can use it to align receivers and just for other signal sources. So it's a, it's a uh, test box when it's in itself. <coughs> the, it's very simple, very intuitive to use. There's only two knobs on it. <coughs> Let's see, let me turn it on. <coughs> uh, this is a uh, on-off button. And if you hold the mode switch down here and turn the on-off button on, what that does is to take it out of the sleep mode. Otherwise, it'll turn itself off to save the batteries. <clears throat> um, but there is a knob here for setting the range, and the range goes from 1.8 all the way up to 170 megahertz. And um, if you push the VF UHF button, it'll take it into a UHF range, 415 to 470. <clears throat> so you can see that it starts at about 415, goes all the way up to 470. And um, it uses a tripler in there, so, and it tells you when you're too high in frequency or too low in frequency, it keeps you within the range. <clears throat> uh, the, um, the band selector, the um, tuning knob here, uh, the UHF selector switch, there's a mode switch for selecting the different modes, a gate switch for selecting the gate time on a counter, on off switch, and then there is a, uh, the main connector is this RF connector here. Uh, this is where you do all your RF measurements and that's the output for the signal generator. <coughs> uh, there is a BNC connector here, if you can see it, that's for the um, um, frequency counter. There's a ground post, and there is a uh, power connector here. Uh, it'll run off of uh, 10 double A's or uh, NICADs or nickel metal hydrides. <coughs> Let's see, there's three displays. There's an LCD display that gives you all the information. It gives you frequency, gives you SWR on this main screen and gives you the real part of the impedance, the resistive part, and also the imaginary part of the impedance, the reactants. Uh, um, and the SWR is up here in this corner. Uh, um, there are two analog meters. There's a uh, SWR meter and the magnitude of the impedance meter. Uh, um, let's see. Okay, well what can you do with it? Um, well, you can use it to adjust antennas, you can use it to tune up antenna tuners, you can take a, a high power amplifier, a uh, maritime amp, uh, you can tune up the input tune circuit, you can tune up the output tune circuit, you can do all kind of measurements on uh, coaxial lines, you can uh, use it to tune filters, um, you can check filters, you can make matching stubs, 
you can check uh, tune circuits and determine resonant frequency, parallel resonant, series resonant frequency. You can check traps on your antennas. You can measure the value and the self resonant frequency of uh, capacitors, inductors. You can check RF chokes. You can check transmitters, uh, oscillators. Just and this is just a few of the things that you can do. <coughs> okay. Well. <coughs> Um, these are some of the things that the 269 um, will measure directly. You can measure directly SWR and you can select the different characteristic impedances. So you can use 300 ohm lines, 75 ohm lines, or some 90 ohm lines. You can take um, uh, uh, parallel cables and check those. It also would check return loss and reflection coefficients. Those are just different ways of saying the uh, SWR. <coughs> um, <coughs> let's see. Oh, okay. <coughs> uh, <coughs> you can um, measure the uh, magnitude of the impedance and ohms. You can measure the phase angle of the impedance. <coughs> and also in a different Form for impedance, you can measure the resistance of the antenna in ohms. You can measure the reactance of the antenna in ohms. And this is an interesting feature here, uh, distance to, to fault. If you have a short in your coax or if you haven't opened your coax, uh, this thing will tell you where that open or short is. <clears throat> and you can use that for a lot of different things. You can uh, determine the electrical length of a piece of coax in feet or in degrees. Um, you can measure the feed line loss in dB. You can tell if a piece of coax is good enough for use on two meters or if you need to use it, keep it uh, for use at HF. You can measure resonance in uh, megahertz directly. You can measure frequency, you can measure capacitance, and you can measure uh, inductance. <coughs> okay, I just um, want to give you some idea of how the 269 works. Uh, just a brief explanation of it. <coughs> what it has is a very wide range LC oscillator, okay? And then it goes into an amplifier that just um, buffers it, gives it some power. And then to uh, get the uh, UHF band, there's a frequency multiplier. And then there's an AGC control <coughs> that AC. Uh, automatic gain control circuit that will control the amplitude coming out of the oscillator directly instead of controlling an amplifier itself. And that keeps the uh, frequency um, pretty constant. Then it goes into an, an impedance matching device. Uh, it's an impedance measuring potentiometer. That's just a fancy way of saying there's one resistor there. And I'll show you that. <laughs> <coughs> Now there's also a, an SWR bridge that's built into it, and that's used to just improve the accuracy when the frequency gets too high to make impedance measurements very accurate. <coughs> well, what we do is to measure three scalar voltages, just measure three voltages, and from those three voltages, we can make all of these measurements. <coughs> it goes through a buffer and some compensation circuits <clears throat> to uh, compensate for dial drops. Then it goes into a 12-bit uh, analog to digital converter, goes into a microprocessor that does all the processing. <clears throat> then it goes into an LCD uh, digital display and analog meter. That's, I mean, that's all there is to it. <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, there's two boards in there. There's an RF board and there's a microprocessor board in there. <clears throat> and uh, there's a pretty heavy drain on the battery, and that's because it just takes a lot of power <clears throat> to uh, measure those impedances and also to prevent um, <clears throat> high power transmitter, AM transmitters, from getting into it and making the, making the measurements inaccurate.